الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين محمد رسول الله صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا كثيرا أما بعد I am walking here in Ashley Razawai with uh, another dear friend of mine whose name is also Omar. So I think all these Omars ask good questions. So he's asking me a question. He said, I guess, I guess a time comes in your life where your contemporaries, your elders and so on, they would have passed on. And you are kind of left alone. So what does that feel like? So I said to him that I'm getting there. I'm getting there myself because Alhamdulillah, uh, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant them Jannatul Firdos without his help. Both my parents have passed away and my wife's parents. And uh, of course, several of my several almost all. Almost all, not all, of my teachers have passed away. Um, and also now, um, for a while now, actually, some of my contemporaries, which is uh, people I went to school with, some people who were younger than me, Zulfi, for example, who was in his 40s, and Abzal, who was my student, and alhamdulillah went up to the level of ADG, Assist, Addition Director General of Police in uh, Bhopal. And, uh, That is the, the sound of uh, the jet blast of a phantom because we are in the flight path of uh, an airbase. So that was the jet blast of a phantom because you are in a flight path of uh, near an airbase. So Said Zafar like school friend who passed away um, seven years ago, around 2010 or something, Bertis Waters very, very dear friend of mine, one of my dearest friends, she passed away. And uh, many others. So I am um, trying to see how, what's the best way to answer Robert's question. And I think the best way, at least that I can think of right now, is to draw a parallel from what we are seeing here which is a scene of passing away, which can and should be a reminder for us. The scene of fall of uh, autumn. The Americans have a way of saying things very directly. Uh, they don't say autumn and uh, where you are left to Kind of now, yes, what is the meaning of autumn? What does what happens in autumn? So, if you are in America, they don't call it autumn, they call it fall. So, no need to guess. Fall is fall, and fall is only one way, which is downwards. 
So, the um, thing to therefore remind myself is that, how does it feel? Well, I think it's a combination of two things. One is that it's, um, whenever I think about these people, I have, alhamdulillah, beautiful memories and that are associated with them and my time with them. And uh, some of them are not, I mean, not, are not everything memory is beautiful. There are some memories which are beautiful, there are some memories which are difficult. Um, maybe in, in the case of some people, you would say, well, I wish I did not have that memory. Yeah. And to a great extent, it, that depends on what I would have given importance to in um, my life, in my relationship, in my interactions. Because we only remember what we give importance to. So if you have in a relationship, if you are focusing on being critical and finding fault and you know, all that kind of stuff, which uh, happens a lot more than we would like it to happen because we allow it to happen. Um, it's a, quite a, I would say, tragic human tendency to remember and recall the negative more than the positive. Because in any relationship, there will be negative and positive because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created like that. And he gave us the choice of what to do with it. So what we should do with the negatives is to learn the lessons. And then forget the data, forget the incident. Learn the lesson, take the lesson and forget the incident because the incident is obviously unpleasant. And if you are super critical and you want to remember every little thing that happened to you, well, guess what? A time will come when you will be left with your memories. And all those memories will be negative. Now, that is not something that I would want to wish on anyone. So, choice is ours. Here is one goose uh, who had the same issue with her feather. This one feather sticking out. Now this goose uh, is waiting for a man who comes here uh, in the morning and feeds her. It's uh, strictly illegal. They are not supposed to do it. But people do these things. But the goose is uh, waiting for him. That's the reason why she is here alone. And uh, that's a beautiful uh, reflection of the sun. So this is the story. That the thing is, what do you choose to remember? So how does it feel to be uh, without your friends and so on? Uh, I would say that I'm not without my friends. I'm just with them in a different way. Um, they are there. They are with me. Every time I go into the into the wild, in the bush, in the forest, I remember three people as if they are walking with me. Nawab uh, Nazir Yazak, Uncle Uncle Rama, and Bertie Forest. Literally, as if they were walking with me and I guess in a way they are in terms of my memories they are not walking with me literally obviously but in terms of the time we lived together what we did what we liked in the case of Uncle Rama and all taxi all three of them we went through some situations in the forest which were dangerous but we faced the danger, we lived to tell the tale. Uh, 
the lessons I learned from them are all alive. And again, this message, the message is this, that it's, it's what I choose to keep alive. And that same thing applies to every single one of us. What do we choose to keep alive? As I said before, and at the risk of repetition, we tend to keep the negative alive and we tend to forget and ignore the positive, which is regrettable. Um, I'm going to try and get a close-up of these birds. There are a few gulls. We are not too far from the sea here. We are probably, how far away do you think we're from sea? Not too far. Because the seasons, if you go to Connecticut, if you go to New, uh, a new, what's it called, New London, and uh, Groton, that's the sea. It's a uh, Long Island Sound, and if you get out on the, of the Long Island Sound, you are on the Atlantic. So we are not so far from the sea. So these gulls to come here is not unusual in terms of distance, but it's unusual in terms of the fact that they choose to come here. Uh, There's the alarm call of the geese and the girls decide to listen to them. But then they realize that there is really nothing to fear because we're not trying to harm them in any way. So they land back there and we did one So memories, and that's why I think that my message to myself and to all of you is choose your memories. Choose your memories very carefully because a day will come when that is all that you will be left with. Your memories. And if you want to be left with a lot of painful memories, that's your choice. But if you want to be left with a lot of beautiful memories, that is also your choice. And that's irrespective of who the people were involved. You will get both. <clears throat> you will get memories that you would be happy about because of the learning. And there will be memories that you will not be able to watch. What we choose to keep is up to us. Ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us the wisdom to take from life all the positive that he sends us and to leave behind the negative that sometimes it comes covered in. And I want to end with the hadith where Rasulullah said, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent Jibreel alayhi salam and he finished making Jannah. He said, go take a look at it. So Jibreel went and took a look at Jannah. And came back and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, what do you think? And of course Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows everything. So these are all conversations for us to run. So Jibreel Islam said, Ya Rab, it is so incredibly beautiful that not a single person will miss getting in there. Every single man and jinn that you created will be in there. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, I will surround it with makari, with uh, temptations, all kinds of temptations. And then Jibreel Islam said, Ya Rab, if you do that, then I fear that not a single one of them will be able to enter Jannah. And indeed that is the reality because Rasulullah said you would get into Jannah only by the grace and mercy of Allah, not by your deeds. So none of us is exempt from or free from or protected against the makari, against the temptation of this life. The key is to try to keep ourselves safe from it by ensuring that our environment is free from them, which means the first thing you do as far as temptation is concerned is not be brave and fight, but run like hell. Run like hell. Run away. There is nothing 
shameful or cowardly about running away from Jahanna. So, run away. And uh, the second thing that we can do and we should do, if despite our efforts, we do fall into it, which happens, and which can happen more than once, is immediately, immediately, without delay, make a stakhwar and tawbah. This is the thing that distinguishes and distinguished our father and mother, Adam alayhi salam and Hawa alayhi salam from shaitan, from Iblis. Because they immediately made us the far and they said, Rabbana, Zalamna and Fusana, we lam takfir lana, wa tarhamna lana kunana minna kasirin. Whereas Iblis said, Give me time. Az anzirni ila yom wi rasum. Said, Give me time until the day of judgment. So anyone who is doing something wrong and procrastinates and delays and thinks or imagines or says that they have time and one day, someday, when I'm old, when I've done Hajj, when I've done this, when I've done that, I will make it so far and he is following a path of Iblis. And there's no guarantee that that day will come. And then Allah said, Jibreel Salaam and said, go look at Jahannam. And Jibreel Salaam went, and he looked at Jahannam and he came back and said, Ya Rab, it is so terrible, so fearful, so fearsome. Not fearful, so fearful, so fearsome, so terrible that not a single person, no jinn, no human being will ever do anything to it in there. And that's why Allah said, I will surround it with shahawats, with base desires. And Jibari Salaam said, Ya Rab, we should do that soon. And then not a single one of them will escape it. Every single one of them will be in Jahannam. And once again, we rely on the immense forgiveness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Where he said, Ya ibadi al qul ya ibadi al ladina asrafu ala anfusim la taqnatu umir rahmatillah. Inna Allah yaghfiru zunuba jamia. Innahu huwa al ghafurur rahim. Allah said, O my slaves who have transgressed against themselves, do not despair of the mercy of Allah. Truly, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is of forgiving most merciful. Truly, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is forgive all sins. And truly, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is of forgiving most merciful. So I remind myself and you, let us remember the good things from our lives, experiences, relationships, people, friends, and forgive them and forgive ourselves for whatever is negative. Take the lesson, leave the story, and continuously and constantly keep seeking the mercy of Allah, run away from everything which is haram, and towards the mercy of Allah by seeking his forgiveness and by repenting.